When I was in my final year of primary school, I was introduced for the first time to Boolean logic. And I completely fell under the spell of Boolean logic because I was a little girl who struggled every day with maths. And in actual fact, I couldn't tell time until I was in secondary school. And it's quite funny to me, looking back now on the fact I'm now a group chief data officer, which is all about um, bytes of information like that because I could just never have imagined I would have taken this path to get there. I'm an arts-based, right brain thinker. For me, data is about stories, and I love listening to and telling stories. If I think about the future, and I think there's building consensus around a future in which we are increasingly move, removing humans from the loop, because machines will be better at automating, routinized tasks and thinking, where does that leave us? So the stuff I'm seeing says that actually there's going to be more demand for individuals who come from a, an arts or creative background than a pure science background. So I feel really excited about the future when we, we genuinely bring back these two sets of skills together. If I'm honest about it, one of the things that I've struggled with throughout my career is the belief that I'm good enough. And therefore, I think in some strange, weird, internal way, which is what happens when you don't talk about things out loud. I was ashamed, I was ashamed to admit that I was struggling. And the number of conversations I have with women in my organisation who sort of labour onto the illusion that you should only have one mentor or asking for more than one is somehow greedy. I'm like, no, you're looking to them for certain pieces of guidance and those it's rarely you find one human being who's able to, to meet all your needs. Together they will provide a blend that's helpful. But I think it's foolhardy to look to one person. Um, I was, when I started my career, incredibly idealistic and believed passionately in meritocracy. And I still believe passionately in meritocracy. And in simple terms it comes down to this. The characteristic of the ability to take charge is still believed by both men and women, by the way, to be an inherently an inherent characteristic of men rather than women. One of the only ways of breaking a confirmation bias is to expose people to different data points. So one of the ways of challenging people's inbuilt biases is to expose them to more women taking charge and in leadership positions. Yeah, so what, if I reflect on myself and my younger self, I... Um, was very conscious of where I was different and I was anxious about that and strangely enough it's that very preparedness in me now to be different, to think something else to the groups I'm in, to say things that other people won't say that makes me valuable. Um, what else would I say? I would say don't worry about not feeling confident, I don't feel confident most of the time but what I've learned to be is brave and they're different. I can't be any more confident than I can be tall yeah, but I can be brave. I suppose one of the things that's so hard when you're at school is imagining the amount of opportunity that exists in the world. If you're brave and you work hard and you're generally kind and decent, all that good stuff, things will work out in the long run. You know, I can't imagine what it's like to be at school or university now. It's a very, very, very challenging time, but we are gonna live a long time our career is going to last long times and there is loads of choice and opportunity out there, more than you, your wildest dreams can conceive of. So this speaks to something that I think I bring, which is the ability to connect disparate conversations, disparate people, experiments that are happening, synthesising them into something that is holistic.